Hey, what's going on guys? Welcome back to another video. This is going to be a walkthrough of the Feed Mock collaboration that me and my friend Daniel have made for the Empire Lug booth at Brick Fair, Virginia 2023. We're just gonna walk through the entire thing. I built the left half of the mock and he built the right. So I'm gonna walk us through this side, kind of all of the minifigures and the techniques and everything like that. And then I'll pass it over to Daniel and him. he'll kind of take over the reins and explain his side. So starting over on the left, basically this is the movie scene. This is taken inspiration from the Phantom Menace, the scene where the Naboo security kind of comes underneath the arch and blows up the AAT. And then we have over on the main side, obviously the Naboo security coming through underneath the arch. And then on the other side of the street, we have Anakin, Obi-Wan, Qui-Gon, Padme, R2, all coming through like we see in the movie. I don't have the clickers because there was kind of no way for me to figure that out, but I do have them on either side starting to attack the droids. This is kind of my own rendition of it. It's not based exactly off the movie. There are the key elements. I did change the speeder to a flash speeder. So in the movie, it is what is called a Geon speeder. And I don't really like that design and the flash speeder is much more recognizable. So I switched it to a flash speeder. That is my own custom design and I made it in teal, which really adds in a nice amount of color. The rest of the mock is all tan, dark orange and sand green. So then when you see the teal, it really pops, which is really nice. And then the AAT that it is shooting at, I was thinking about having an explosion, but it would have kind of taken away from the look of the AAT. So what I did was I added in a explosion to this building behind it. So my idea is they're kind of rushing through and the guy kind of messed up his first shot. So his first shot overshot the AAT, hit behind it, and then he's gonna correct his aim for the second shot. So that was a fun little detail that I added in. I really like the way it turned out. There's lights in there, so it really glows, especially when the lights are off. The AAT is a design by the builder, Louis Kiwi, with the instructions from Brick Vault that I slightly modified. So there's a few changes, but the main design is by Louis Kiwi. So basically the main battle, what we have is the battle droids all kind of getting attacked from both sides. We have a bunch of guys getting knocked down, taken out. There's a bunch of dead ones on the ground and a bunch of other ones in the midst of being shot. I didn't want to add in any lasers or blasts because I don't really like the way that looks. The only thing that I really like is doing explosions and stuff. I like to have everything kind of clean and frozen in time. When we started making the idea for this mock, we wanted to have water because that is kind of what sets Theed apart from any other place in Star Wars. It's the city on the river. So we definitely wanted to have the water. So the water design is just dark tiles, the trans black tiles with dark blue and dark green underneath it. And then towards the barrier or the wall of the city, there's regular blue to kind of show that depth. And then there's trans clear, kind of like the foam brushing up against the wall. And then another cool thing that we did was we have some dark tan at the very bottom, like where the side of the wall is getting wet and kind of darker in color. And then moving up for the road, we wanted to do just light bluish gray. There's no real markings in the scene or really in Battlefront 2 or anything else. So we just wanted to do a plain gray road, but that would also be very boring. So what we did was we added in some snot tiles. So there's kind of the elevated tiles, which really works well when you kind of get like a farther away low angle. You can see the height variation, which really looks nice. So it was kind of a fun way of still making it look interesting, but obviously the colors and everything being very boring and bland and everything. So the next thing that we worked on were the buildings. The buildings were a bit of a challenge, but they were pretty fun to build. The first one here is just a square. And then the next one was the challenging, probably the most challenging building that I worked on. This is round for the most part. And then on this corner, it kind of goes out straight. So that was really challenging to figure out, but I'm really happy with the way that I did that. And it really turned out nice. It's probably my favorite building that I made. There's a bunch of different stories. Each of the buildings have at least two stories, but this is, I think, the only one that actually has three stories. So I'm really happy with that. We got some balconies in there too. The design for the windows is trans clear plates so that the filler inside is hidden. You just see the light shining through. All of the lights in this mock are brick stuff and light my bricks. And we went and just added in trans orange and trans yellow, like the glow coming from inside the buildings. 
And then the next building that I made was this one. This is another two-story building, but I added around this trim at the bottom just to make it a little bit different. And obviously the main driving factor of this building is the explosion, which looks really, really nice. I'm really happy with the way that turned out. Basically the way that I did that was I made kind of a hollowed out section in the corner and then I went through and added in lightsaber bars and clear bars and just added a bunch of tan bits of like debris just getting thrown all over the place. And I really like the way this turned out. This is probably my favorite explosion that I've made. And then the next building that I made was the arch building. This was probably the second most complicated. It's originally an octagon but I didn't want it to take up that much space, so I made it a hexagon, chopped off the back, and just slid it all the way to the back of the mock. So the first two panels in the front are angled, and then everything else is just kind of straight on the regular stud layout. So that was a little bit challenging, but I was able to come up with a design that I really liked using cheese slopes, kind of just making the corners fit really nicely together. And then the windows turned out really nice using new arches. So that's also very accurate to the movie, which is something that I'm really proud of. And then the actual arch section in the middle is all built snot. There's a bunch of slopes that kind of meet together in the middle that form the shape. And then underneath, I added in tiles just so that when you get kind of a nice low angle shot, you don't see anti-studs or anything like that. So it's just nice and clean all the way around. And then the other building to the left of it, this one I kind of threw together in a day or so, and I'm pretty happy with the way it looks. There's a bunch of different stuff going on there. There's a three-stepped roof, which is pretty cool. It's got the arched windows, which also look really nice. And then there's a kind of a porch in front, which is something that I didn't do for any of the other buildings. So I'm pretty happy about that. And then the final building on my section is kind of like a seating area. It's like a communal area where people can sit down, take a break from the work or whatever, and just kind of sit down, relax, kind of surrounded by a nice greenery. You can see some plants growing in the middle there. So that I'm actually really happy with. And the notable thing with that is the dome on top. That is the planet sphere. I believe it's Yavin 4. I came up with a design which is wrapping clips on the bottom of that sphere and it melds it in beautifully. So we use that design three times in the mock. That is basically the overarching story. The only other thing on this side to note is the trees, which was another design that I came up with. It is flex tubes, kind of all wrapped together with some whips and then there's leaves attached on a bunch of different branches, so I'm really happy with the way that came out. I think my favorite part is that the whips kind of look like the actual branches sticking down, which is something that you don't really see in most tree designs, so I'm really happy with the way it turned out. But now we can take a look at Daniel's section of the mock, starting with the bridge, and we'll move our way over to the right. Alright, so as Ethan mentioned, I built the right side of the mock, so that's everything from the bridge to the right side, including the bridge, and this is actually the first thing I started on when we had originally planned out the mock. We decided we wanted to split the mock into these two halves and have the river going through it, and obviously we needed the bridge to connect them. And the way it was built, it's just a bunch of hinges I guess you could say, and originally I had it on a bit of a steeper angle, it was more of a half semicircle and pretty much because the size restrictions i had to make it a bit longer so it ended up working out in my favor it looks a lot more like the one we see on feed and then moving on right here i knew for my section i wanted to base it a bit more on the battlefront 2 game just because ethan had based his on the movie i wanted to have mine a bit different than his so this first building here is the round building and this one i tried to pretty much replicate exactly from Battlefront 2. You see a bunch of these and it really stood out to me as just a building that looked like feed and it was also what I thought would be the most complicated. So this was the first one I started with. And really when I started building this, I didn't know where to start exactly. So I pretty much kind of prototyped how I wanted to do the actual round design, you could say. And what I landed on doing was building different like sections of panels and from there I have actual panel pieces on the edges and that allows you to butt everything up right up against each other. You can attach it all with plate hinges and you're able to get a really seamless design and even though it's a three-story building with different levels that are all different sizes I was able to kind of carry the same technique throughout the three levels. And for the roofs of this building it's all stud domes it's a round building so I needed a round roof and just because of the size of it, I wasn't able to use any of the planet domes or anything like that. And then there's not a whole lot of wedge plates or curved bricks in sand green, so this seemed like the only option. 
but I think it ended up it ended up working out well. There's actually a stud dome generator we found online, and from there I was able to just plug in the size I needed and mess around with it a bit until it fit what we needed it to be. And we also ended up using the same design for the two domes over on the arch on Ethan's side. And moving on right next to that, we got the first orange building I made. This is another one I tried to base pretty similarly to off of Battlefront 2. This is one of the more common buildings. You can definitely tell in the game, they pretty much copy and pasted the same building all across the map. So this was one of the more common ones. So I knew I wanted to have it. And it really isn't all too that complicated. Um, it's not supposed to be like an exact replica from the game. I just wanted to take kind of the key aspects and those being the big arches on the bottom and then the row of windows on the top. You can see I was able to use a couple of the larger light blue straight arch pieces inside of the tan arches. That's something I found that they just fit in there perfectly and they worked out really well. And right above that, you can see I did the trim inside of the middle. Originally, I hadn't had that on there, but I found it looked a bit plain, so I wanted something in there to kind of separate the monotony of just the straight tan wall. And for the roof, the design isn't anything too complicated. It's the same one Ethan actually used on his orange buildings. It's just different sections of dark orange with wedges on the edges, and then I used a couple of hinges to attach those. And it's not perfect. It does have a few gaps on the edges, but it, overall, it definitely gets the design across and it was the simplest way we were able to get that done. And right next to that one we have yet another building based off of Battlefront 2. It's also featured in the movie and this one it isn't anything too different from the other ones you could say. Really the big difference that I wanted to have with this one is the bottom floor doesn't have any windows or at least to me it didn't look like it was but I also didn't want to just have a plain tan wall so what I ended up coming up with is having a bit of a out trim for the bottom as well as I added these pillars in just to take up the empty space. And then right above that it's the same archway window design from the other building just kind of spread around. And this was also the first building that I used the awnings in which was something I had wished I honestly came up with earlier. They really help add color as well as just break up the monotony of the straight tan for all the buildings. And right in the back right corner right here, we have another orange building. I wanted to carry out a similar design to the original one I had, both because, like I mentioned before, you do see a lot of the same one in Battlefront 2, as well as I was just a little low on time. So I decided to actually go with the exact same dimensions I had from the other one, even using the same large arch pieces for the bottom there. But I did want to do a little bit of a different design. I didn't want to just use the same building twice. So what I ended up going with was I did like a two-story roof. So as you can see on the left side here, it's a two-story building with both the windows on both floors and it has the roof on top. But then on the right, just on the third here, the roof is actually on pretty much the same level as the arch pieces. This was something I saw Ethan do on his round building. So I wanted to carry it over to my section and then on the left side of the mock for the final two buildings, I decided to do another elevated section. That's something I did uh, actually for the other two buildings, if you didn't notice already. That's something we included just to, we didn't want to have the mock be completely flat. So we decided to do these elevated sections. You see them a bunch in Battlefront 2. And just seeing the different railways kind of stacked up, especially in the front, it definitely adds a lot of visual interest as opposed to just a flat light gray slab. But anyways, for the two buildings, these were the final two I made, and I was definitely a little restricted with the size. I didn't have a lot of width to play with, so I wanted to do something taller, as you can see. And then finally, sort of in the center here, we have the gazebo area. This was supposed to be more of a courtyard. You see a lot of that in Battlefront 2. You see these courtyard areas with fountains, gazebos, so I wanted to incorporate that in... For the design of that, it's nothing too crazy. I ended up actually using brick for brick, the exact same design as the tall building for the roof at least. And then for the floor, I just came up with a sort of grid pattern. You see a little bit of that in the movie, so I went ahead and threw it in there. And as in terms of the figs there, we were a little lost on what to do with the rest of the mock because obviously on Ethan's side we have sort of the battle but on here we didn't think it would make much sense to have like another fight going on at the same time because it's supposed to be a surprise on Ethan's side like the attack 
So as you can see here, we just have a couple of battle droids roughing up the citizens. You can see a couple of them being escorted in handcuffs as well as a few being held at gunpoint. And then for the last thing on my section that I actually ended up doing was the trees and the greenery areas. I knew I wanted to have a bunch of these because I felt like it would kind of fill up some of the empty space as well as just add a little more color to the mock. Ethan was the one who actually came up with the design for these trees. Unfortunately, I kind of had to build them last minute so they're not as perfect as I always like them to be, but they definitely still get the point across and they help the environment a little bit of more of a upkept city. So that just about wraps up this entire collaboration mod. Obviously we had two builders, myself and Daniel. It's a few months of work, but it's definitely rewarding to see the entire thing come together so seamlessly. Everything kind of flows nicely. We tried to reuse dome designs and roof designs and just certain architectural cues just to make the entire thing flow as one city. And then we added in certain things with the minifigures just trying to make it seem like a living city there's you know food everywhere they got market stands people hanging out in the community areas just to make it seem like it's an actual city that people live in and not just buildings on a street but that is everything for this mock i hope you guys enjoyed it thank you so much for watching and i will see you all in the next video goodbye